Modern Warfare 2 Season 3. I was waiting to get back into video creation. I took like four or five days off just so I could, you know, sort of take a breath. I uploaded 31 videos last month. I did 15 live streams and now I've, I've rejuvenated. I'm back. I'm here. I'm ready to talk about Season 3. And more importantly, I am a little bit pissed. So this video should be at least slightly more entertaining than usual. By the way, I do live stream on this channel if you guys want to you know, watch me live. I, I plan on playing some Call of Duty. Also, I plan on playing a weird game called uh, Mo Modern Combat Operation Blackout on the Nintendo Switch. Also, people paid me to play like Five Nights at Freddy's and they also paid me to play uh, Roblox Frontlines and stuff like that. So it, it's gonna be really dumb and really cringy and I really hope you subscribe, hit the bell icon and hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it. So season three, um, I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed, even though the season looks pretty good. So pulling up the picture right here, here is the roadmap. Now, everything on the Warzone side, I don't really care about. I haven't been playing DMZ. I haven't been playing Warzone. I have been way more into multiplayer, like my whole life. So that's, Warzone is fine. DMZ is fine. I just, I, I, play, I play multiplayer. So I'm not gonna talk about Warzone. If you care about Warzone, go watch Warzone YouTubers. That's not me, it's never been me. I'm gonna talk about everything to the right of this. So, weapons, operators, and more. We're finally getting Task Force 1 for 1 operators in a battle pass, that's really good. I, I like that the apparently the new battle pass is going to be just better. Like, it's just gonna have more stuff in it, I guess? I, I don't know, I, I read their description. It didn't make any sense, but I'm all here for it because I love spending money on Activision products and a big shill. But then, uh, we have the Intervention and the Cronin Squall, or sorry, the FJX Imperium and the Cronin Squall. I don't know what the Cronin Squall is. I, I did see on Twitter, uh, uh, Buff Nerd Gaming, and I believe a couple other guys were talking about what this gun is. I don't remember. I don't have my Twitter open. It's a gun. It's real. And when I review the gun, I'll talk about it, and it's real-life counterpart. But uh, I'll have to go educate myself, I guess. Uh, also, they're adding the Tech 9 later on, but that's only cool if you like shitty pistols. We're also getting two new operators, who cares? We're also getting a camo event challenge, or challenge event, and I'm pretty excited about this. The camo challenge event they did last time with Path of Ronin was right up my alley. It was perfect for me. So I'm excited. Hopefully it's not long shots or headshots. I hope that it's like double kills or kills through cover, something kind of interesting. Hopefully not too grindy. I felt like there was maybe too many headshots required uh, with the Path of Ronin, but hopefully they're creative with it and they sort of gauge how grindy it should be, but I completed it in like a week, so it should be fine. So going over to Modern Warfare 2, you know, the game people spent $70 on, which I know that's a bit of a whiny thing. Back in the day, Call of Duty was $60, but to get map packs, you had to spend an extra 50, so it's like $110. Now uh, the battle passes are optional, the weapons are free and grindable. It's a different scenario, but it does still rub us the wrong way, doesn't it? When the Modern Warfare 2 section seems to be the most small section on the page. But either way, uh, Infinity Ward is back to spreading themselves way too thin. We have two battle maps, two 6v6 maps, and three gunfight maps plus shipment for a gunfight game mode. And let's start ranting here because I am I'm not very happy. So again, like I just said, they're spreading themselves too thin. I think they have trouble managing 6v6 and battle mode, or I'm sorry, ground war uh, and invasion. I, they have trouble balancing those things as it is. I don't feel like either gets enough content, although I will talk about that more in a second, but we didn't need gunfight. I'm gonna say it, this game did not need gunfight. And in my opinion for me, especially not without gunfight 6v6. Now Black Ops Cold War had gunfight 6v6, but you know what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about the, the good old days with Call of Duty Vanguard, where the game had a lot of problems for sure, but we had like a butt ton of 6v6 maps and combat pacing. Imagine, imagine if the content wasn't spread between a bunch of completely different game modes and people told me, people told me that my idea about having a realistic tactical game mode with whole, it's a whole new rule set and different settings and everything, that's too crazy, they'd never do that. But yet here we have invasion, ground war, gunfight, and 6v6, mm, what a headache. And I just, I just think this is bizarre. Um, for 6v6 maps, we're getting uh, Paleo's Lighthouse and black gold. Plato's Lighthouse has the building from estate, but isn't estate. And again, this is just another subjective dig into my heart because estate, regardless of what you guys think about it, that's my favorite COD map. I grew up playing that map. I won my first free for all on that map in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on my 360 in my room, sorry, my sister's 360 in my room. And I was so proud of myself. And um, I just have such fond memories of 1v1ing my friends on that map. And it's just, it just makes me really sad that 
I was teased into thinking it's dark, rainy estate, but it's not, it's whatever. But then Black Gold is an NVG map, and this is another little dig, subjective dig into my heart, because I loved the NVG mode in Modern Warfare 2019, but they just stopped adding content to it, like, immediately. They just stopped adding stuff to it, removed it from playlists, I'm pretty sure. They made it, like, impossible to search for a game with it, and then when it was around, nobody was playing it at all. And then I think they just mixed into realism, which makes sense, but now we have Uno. Uno NVG map. Why? Is this gonna be a normal rotation? People didn't like NVG, and the people that did like NVG just wanted it to have its own playlist and more maps. So it's like the people that like it, here's one map, like years later, and the people that didn't like it, they're just gonna back out every time it shows up because they don't wanna play with canted lasers and play in the dark, because it just, it just changes the way the game plays. And I do like the variety it brings. Like you, you guys have heard me talk about how I don't look at any map in a vacuum because I like to think about how a play session is improved by adding variety to the map pool. This is a little bit of a turd in the pool, because again, people that love NVG, and you can tell me if I'm being cynical, this is a middle finger to you, because, oh, you like NVG? Here's one map. And if you don't like NVG, well, this is taking up one of the two 6v6 maps. Kind of shitty. And then Afghan is featured in the cave complex map, the battle map, and... <sighs> Okay, so Afghan's now in the war zone map and a battle map, but God forbid we get it in 6v6. So now Terminal and Afghan are tucked away in war zone and ground war and invasion and DMZ, but Lord fuck a duck, we can't can't play it in 6v6. Uh, and then Ronin Oil Fields, uh, that's also uh, an El Mazra thing and it's now a battlefield map. Kind of looks like Operation Firestorm from Battlefield 3, so I'm a little excited for that. But I just, I don't play Call of Duty for those larger game modes. They're a novelty. I like 6v6. And even Activision refers to 6v6 as core multiplayer. All right, so if that's your core, why is it so damn flimsy? And then why do I have to wait in season for the hatchery map? This is apparently another 6v6 map. Why didn't you just launch the season with three 6v6 maps and do a bunch of battle maps mid-season when people are bored of the game and need something new to do anyway? Like, I just, ugh, like 6v6 needed a chunk of content and we're getting not a state, a state, and we're getting an NVG map, and then gunfight without gunfight 6v6. Other than that, we do have a new co-op mission, which is a defender sort of survival thing, then a new raid, that's cool. I think the raids are a really fun way of continuing the story and adding like that classic Spec Ops vibe, and then Ground War Infected, I guess that's neat. I don't know. This is such a mixed bag of, I'm not angry, because like obviously this is a bunch of free stuff I don't have to pay for coming into the game that I enjoy playing. Because I, I enjoy the core, of MW2, but I think what everybody wanted, and I, and I think this is just across the board, you guys remember when Vanguard for one of the seasons released like a big spawn rework? Like, or when COD World War II redid its perks, or even when Vanguard in Modern Warfare 2019, when they changed up their perks and their games. I think also Black Ops Cold War did that once? I, I don't know. I was just hoping that like one of the things they could have done for this season is be like, okay, Perk rework, spawn rework, a bunch of 6v6 maps. I think that would have just solved the game for so many people. Like, I don't want to be caught whining here, but I feel like this is such an uneven, awkward offering of things when a, a lot of us were just like, give us 6v6 maps and fix the spawns and perks. Like, I think a lot of us were there. Maybe, you know, you go one step more, we maybe want the classic minimap back, or maybe, you know, have suppressors work with Ghost properly. Maybe that'll happen uh, with the big update because usually seasons come with some gameplay changes, but it's just upsetting that while we're not getting a terrible season or just a bad update, that would be the wrong thing to refer to this as, it just feels like an awkward offering. And also, as a little bit of an addendum, because I was gonna release this video yesterday when the news dropped, but I thought, that's not, this channel does not have its finger on the pulse of Call of Duty. That's, that's not what it has. But I do like to share my opinions on nonsense. And waiting until, like, just a week before, six days before the season to show this stuff off, I do like that they did a slow build-up. They got a phase member to go out and, and show off the intervention a little bit. That's cool. You know, I like that they were teasing some things throughout the last couple days. But there's a problem with the hype around this game. There's a problem with discussions around this game. And I think it's that we do not get trailers and teasers and stuff earlier. We sit on empty anticipation for so many weeks out of the life cycle where it's like, we don't know what's coming. We have leaks, we have rumors, 
but we don't know how many maps we're getting, we don't know what guns we're really getting, we want the intervention, but we also don't want to be too excited for the intervention, you know? And it's not until, like, a week before that we start getting information, and I think that's a travesty. Okay, travesty is a little bit harsh of a word, but it's obvious that the player base sits on pins and needles wondering if they're gonna get something worth being excited for for a long time. And I believe little leaks and things throughout the months would keep us satiated more and make us more excited. It would give content creators more things to talk about. It would give players more things to think about. You know, if they just would have shown like, like a quick cut of like the intervention looking up at the lighthouse from the new 6v6 map, like if they would have done that last month and been like, stay tuned. Like that would have been really cool because we're like, oh, that's that looks like the intervention and oh, the lighthouse and a dark rainy map, that's cool. But we don't, we get this stuff like a week before the stuff comes out. So it's like excitement on Twitter for a little bit. The stuff comes out. And I don't know if you know anything about like product psychology, but usually getting the thing is what ends the hype. Getting the product, purchasing the thing, getting the house, getting the job, getting the degree really just shuts us down sometimes or it's like, all right, now it's here. Yeah, I knew it was gonna be here. But that slow buildup of, of hype is a really good way to engage the community and tease us a little bit. Um, and in general, they don't communicate with us. Like they'll fix a sprint out bug, they'll fix one shot snipe rifles, like they'll fix that in a day. But they have just weeks and weeks of like not communicating about other issues and other balancing problems. And I think that's, I, I think that is a travesty. I think that is sad because we're just, we're just left with no information, no news, no hype until like a week before a season comes out and now we have to wait a week for like patch notes and I just miss when FPS devs, AAA devs, when Infinity Ward would interact with us. Like I think like Infinite Warfare every month or every week would do like a, hey, this is what we're doing with the game right now, like dev updates and now we don't get that. Same thing, we used to get that from DICE and now DICE doesn't do that over the Battlefield side of things and I think it's just really bad. I know they don't want us to just like have all the information for months until we don't care anymore but just little leaks and teases and things would have been really cool, but instead, it just, it just, it's the way it is. And some of you guys might not be quite so in tune with the COD community, and you're thinking of it from a player-based standpoint, but as somebody who's like really like watching the community on Twitter and on Reddit, in my comment section, in my chat, it just seems like there's no hype because there's no knowledge. You can't put your hype into something that you don't know. I mean, I did a video about the 10 leaked weapons coming and you can watch that video and go, oh, wow, they're adding that gun. I love that gun. But the back of your mind's like, oh, they might not add that gun. It's just a leak. Anyway, rant over. You know, I, I just think empty anticipation and this awkward content release is just kind of whatever. It's lopsided. It's awkward, but it's it's still something I'm going to let myself be excited for because, again, it is 100% free content except for the battle pass, but everything that really matters is free and I get it. You know, same day as everyone else, we just get to all get together as a player base and play it. And I'm gonna be streaming it on the day it comes out. That'll be fun, but you know, I just wish I just wish things were a little different. It just leaves me wanting a change that I'm tired of wanting for the franchise. Again, it's good stuff. And people are gonna think I'm being overly negative or I'm being over overly shilly, but it's really a balance of like, hey, neat. Oh well. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end of this video. Oh neat, oh well. Um, yeah. See you when I see you guys. Goodbye.